Hello, today we are going to take a virtual art tour and talk about six pieces of art from an art show called Dress Up Speak Up, which is on view at 21C Museum Hotel downtown. Dress Up Speak Up is an exhibition full of artworks that's visually loud and colorful and highlights ways that different cultures around the world express themselves through clothing and art making. You are going to learn about artists who take really old techniques and make them feel fresh and new. I hope you enjoy the show. Tapestry is a very old way to make art that was popular hundreds of years ago. Like, if you lived in a castle, you would want to hang tapestries on your walls because that's what was cool. Tapestries are basically really big blankets made of colorful fabric and thread, and they were popular with kings and queens because they were huge, they were easy to hang on stone walls, they brought color into the dreary castle, and most importantly, they helped keep the castle warm in the winter. Three Kings is a tapestry created by American artist Bisa Butler. Miss Bisa works as both a professional artist and as a school teacher in a place called New Jersey. In her artwork, which she calls Three Kings, Miss Bisa portrays a father and his two sons. They are farm workers in the 1930s in Louisiana. She uses thousands of pieces of colorful and printed fabric to portray the three figures. She said that it took over 150 pieces of fabric just to make one face. The youngest son doesn't wear a hat like his brother and his dad. He has what looks like gold sprinkled in his hair, which is to say he's destined for something greater in life. Bisa Butler uses her artwork to spread positivity through images. She doesn't want people to get sad or upset when they look at her work, but rather happy and inspired. And just like a sculptor will sign their name with a chisel, and a painter will sign their name with a paintbrush, a tapestry artist will oftentimes sign their names with a needle and thread on the front of their tapestry. Kehinde Wiley is an American painter from California. He currently lives and works in New York City. In 2017, Kehinde Wiley got famous worldwide for being selected to paint President Barack Obama's official portrait, which was really cool for Kehinde because he and President Obama had similar upbringings. They both had American mothers and African fathers. So this was a really big deal for him and for President Obama. Like most professional artists, Kehinde started making artwork as a little kid. He started focusing primarily on painting around the age of 12, and it took years and years for him to get to where he is now as a professional artist. Kehinde's main goal as an artist is to give a voice to the people who feel like they get ignored and feel like they don't get listened to. Throughout his studies in the art world, He's realized that there's been a real lack of diversity in the paintings and the artwork that he sees. So he uses his brush and his canvas to represent the people that look like him, the people in his community and the people in his family. So in doing this, he takes old classic paintings and he remakes them by removing the original figure and putting in people from his neighborhood. And just doing this is such a small thing but it's so empowering and makes people feel so special when they see his paintings. At the museum, we have one of Kehinde Wiley's paintings called Morpheus. It's nine feet tall and 16 feet wide, which is to say it's almost as tall as a basketball hoop. And it's one of the first pieces you see when you walk into the museum, which is great. In the background, there are thousands of leaves and flowers, which I can't even imagine how long that would take to paint. The boy laying down on the bed is playing the role of Morpheus, who is the god of dreams in Greek mythology. That's why he's laying down. K. 
Hindi Wiley shows us that anyone and everyone can enjoy paintings. And for that matter, we can all be in paintings too. And they can be just as beautiful as the paintings that were made 300 years ago. Next, we're going to talk about the artwork of Ebony Patterson, who's a Jamaican artist who's living and working in Chicago. At the museum, we have three of Ebony's tapestries on display. This one in the picture is called Brella Crew, and it's a combination of three tapestries, which is called a triptych. Similar to Kehinde Wiley, Ebony Patterson uses her artwork to represent the people of her community as well, in this case, Jamaica. Ebony's artwork is tapestries, but it looks different than Bisa Butler's tapestries because she uses a different process. She covers the surface of her tapestries with a lot of familiar materials that you probably use in school. If you look closely at her work, you'll see sequins and glitter and glue and beads and even toys. There are so many cool things. You can look at her piece for an hour and see different stuff the entire time. It's like a big sparkly find it game made with the same tools and materials that you use at school. And Ebony doesn't just make artwork for walls. Recently, she made a tapestry that floated on water. She used thousands of flowers and floated them on top of a swimming pool. Could you imagine jumping in that? Jody Paulson is an artist and fashion designer from South Africa. His artwork is big and colorful and so much fun to look at. This big piece is called Find Your Gaggle. This is Jody's way of saying, find your friends. Find the people that you can be silly with and those will be the people that make you the happiest. All of these colorful shapes that make up Jody Paulson's figures and backgrounds are all hand cut with scissors out of big sheets of felt. Jody has tons and tons of different colors of felt and he cuts all of these shapes and then glues them together to make these tapestries. If you're unfamiliar with this material, felt is really, really soft. A lot of stuffed animals are made out of felt and even pajamas are made out of felt. Because of this, his artwork is really flexible and really soft. So to hang it on a wall, you have to get a box of pins and literally put hundreds of pins through the piece into the wall just to get it to stay put. Jody has access to this material because he's an artist and because he's a fashion designer. But if you wanted to recreate something like this in your home or at school, you could do it with paper and your glue stick. Nick Cave is from Missouri, but he lives and works in Chicago. He's an artist and he's a teacher. His artwork is hard to pin down because it's not just one thing. It's a sculpture, it's also a costume, and it's also a performance. And where you see it will usually define how you see it. So if you see one of his pieces in a museum, you'll think of it as a sculpture. But if you see people wearing them out in the streets, it might look like a costume. And if you see people dancing in them, you'll definitely think it's a performance. Nick calls his artwork sound suits. And he calls them that because when you put them on, even if you're just walking, you make noise. And if you're dancing, you make a lot of noise. And the noise is dependent on what the suit is made out of. Sound suits can be made out of anything. Nick finds items at yard sales and thrift shops and other places where discarded items can be found. And he makes sound suits out of them. So you could see a suit made out of buttons or toys or noisemakers or plates or purses or sticks. Anything that could make noise, 
Nick will find a way to make it into a sound suit. Do you think you have enough old toys at home to make your own sound suit? Carlos Gomez de Francisco is a Cuban artist based in Louisville, Kentucky. He makes really wonderful drawings and paintings, but what I really love and what I want to tell you about is his photos. Carlos did a series of photos in his home country of Cuba where he found people who make less than a dollar a day and he asked them if they would like to pose in some portraits. Together, he and the models looked around their homes and yards and found different objects and different materials that they could use that helped make them look fancy, to help make them look like they were royalty. With the help of well-crafted costuming, Carlos was able to turn curtains and drapes into ball gowns and dresses. He was able to turn old car air filters into golden crowns. He was able to turn dish rags and pillows into hats. And he turned building materials and fishing nets into capes and shawls. Like Kehandi Wiley and Ebony Patterson, he shows his community as beautiful and powerful. And like Jody Paulson and Nick Cave, he shows you that beautiful art can be made out of anything. It doesn't matter how many crayons you have, how many paints you have, or how many markers you have. Your creativity will always be your greatest art making tool. Mm -hmm.